Yes, yes, the showdown you've all been waiting for. XPS 15 versus MacBook Pro 15. that keeps on complaining about my intro. Woo! For you, my friend. So if you want to upgrade from Windows Home to Windows Pro or just get insanely cheap Windows and Office 2016 keys, head on down to 0 and 9. Links are in the description and I even have a discount code for you and they also have cheap gaming keys too. Now the Battle of Goliath, the XPS 15 versus the MacBook Pro 15. Both released 2018, both with the 8th generation 6 core, Coffee Lake parts up to i9. I will pick which one I think's better, but that's not the point of this video. This video is just to help you make an informed decision. I already made a video like a month ago comparing the MacBook Pro at the time which is the last generation one versus Aero 15 versus the XPS 15. So this is just an update to that video just because the new Macs are dropped. And by the way, these are probably the last laptops with these current designs. Meaning I think the next XPS 15 and the next MacBook Pro will be a new design. So this should be the most refined. So since 2015, I've always been recommending the XPS 15 for the best premium 15 inch laptop. It was always a slam dunk for me, but now it's not that easy anymore. So let's crack on and compare them. So when it comes to price, so I specced up both of them with one terabyte SSD, 32 gigs RAM and an i9. And the Mac was $1,000 more. It's like 3,899 US versus 2,899 US. You're probably gonna have that same thousand pound difference in the UK and here in Australia, that equates to probably $1,800. Big difference, right, in price. But it's not that simple because I've had an argument with my Greek friend, Upper Pistol. We had a discussion because he went out and bought this new 15 inch MacBook Pro, of course. And we were talking about price. And I have to begrudgingly admit he was right. There's a lot of custom parts on the Mac that would offset some of that price difference, like, you know, a custom 16 by 10 display, which I don't think anyone else uses, the touch bar, I think it's like gimmick. The R&D and the cost of implementing that would be fairly high. The Taptic Engine with the trackpad would be custom also and cost quite a lot. The sound system, the T2 chip, which basically is an iPhone processor in your laptop, that would cost a fair bit because it doesn't just do Siri and the touch bar and the sound. It actually offloads a lot of tasks that the CPU would do because it actually talks to another custom part, which is the proprietary custom Apple SSD controller. It actually does encryption on the fly and, and pretty much controls that SSD and, and the custom SSD controller. So there's a lot of stuff that would cost a lot more on the Mac. So I have to begrudgingly meet these Greeks. They think they know maths and unfortunately they do. I don't know how much that offsets the difference, but you do have to factor that in. But I still think spec for spec, certainly the XPS 15 is a much better value. Build quality, both top level build quality here. In actual fact, this MacBook Pro I got here, the build quality wasn't that good actually. I had an issue with it. You can see on the bottom panel there, it doesn't sort of align properly. There's a bit of a gap there. And this isn't the usual case with the Mac. Can actually fit my fingernail and a piece of cardboard in there too. I'm willing to chalk that up to one off, but I have to mention it anyway. But they both have top quality, build quality. I think the Mac looks better from the outside. I like the finish, the uniform thickness. And then when you open up and you see the infinity edge of the XPS 15, the carbon fiber deck, I think it looks better when you open it up. But they both top quality in that regard. And someone actually asked me a question. I'm a bit worried about Dell's build quality. No, I've never had a problem with a Dell and both Apple and Dell have the best support. And as you've seen, I just had a quality issue with the Mac. So it can happen to any laptop. That's what I'm saying. But the support is fantastic with both of them. So you're covered there. Now, I didn't include the Aero 15 in this. I think the Aero 15 belongs with the Razer, Zephyrus, and DS65 MSI. I think they're more gamery sort of things. I don't think the same person that buys a MacBook Pro and what I would say the XPS 15 would be the Windows equivalent of a MacBook Pro is the same person that would buy a Razer. I just don't think they're the same people. So when it comes to weight and thickness, actually the XPS 15 starts at a lighter weight if you get the small battery and the full HD display. It is 17 millimeters thick compared to 15.5 millimeters of the MacBook Pro, but configured the same way the MacBook Pro is 1.83 kilos and the XPS 15 is two kilos. So that's four pounds versus 4.5 pounds. 
Now it actually looks like the MacBook Pro is a lot thinner than the XPS 15 and it's only 1.5 millimeters thinner at the XPS 15's thickest point because Apple do a little trick. The edges are thin but the underside, the belly is actually thicker so it actually looks thinner and the MacBook Pro is actually taller. They're both about the same width. The MacBook Pro is actually taller because it has that 16 by 10 display. When it comes to ports, for me there's only one winner. The chipset they both use supports 16 lanes of PCI Express and Apple have just chosen to use 4th by 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports, which is nice and clean, a lot of bandwidth there, but it's not very practical for day-to-day -day use. I like the XPS 15, which has full-size SD card slot, HDMI, it has USB 3 Type A's and also has a Thunderbolt port as well, so I much prefer the XPS 15's port selection there. When it comes to sound, no contest here. The Mac is 10 out of 10 for sound and the XPS 15, I don't know, about a 7.5. Keyboard and trackpad, I think this is easy too. The XPS 15, a really good keyboard i really do like it macbook pro just try one out you'll either like it or you'll hate it i'm a bit indifferent i don't really like it that much to be honest but the new one is quieter feels a little bit better but i much prefer the xps 15's keyboard but this can certainly be personal preference as well but when it comes to the trackpad there's no personal preference here 10 out of 10 for the mac trackpad and I'd say the XPS 15 is one of the better Windows ones, probably an 8 out of 10, but it's nowhere near as good as the Mac one. When it comes to displays, you can get a full HD version of the XPS 15, but if you talk about the top of the line displays, the 4K 100% Adobe RGB display that the XPS 15 has versus the 2888 by 1800 100% DCI P3 display on the Mac, which is 16 by 10, the XPS 15 is 16 by 9. They are both brilliant displays. The Mac is a little bit brighter at 500 nits versus 400 nits of the XPS 15. Both color accurate, both look superb. I do prefer the XPS 15 just because of the 4K. The 4K does look sharper on the XPS 15, but to counter that, the MacBook Pro has a 16 by 10 ratio, which I really do love too, because you get an extra track in Premiere Pro for me. Let me know down there, what would you prefer? Would you prefer 4K or a taller display? Which one would you prefer? They're both brilliant displays. <laughs> you, you can't go wrong with either, to be honest. But one big bonus the XPS has, it is a touch display as well. So that's one thing to note. And you can actually use a pen. I could actually use the Dell Active Pen with it. Battery life, both top of the class here. This new MacBook Pro actually has better battery life. It has a bigger battery now. It's 83.6 watt hours versus 97 watt hours on the XPS 15. Now the XPS 15, because it has a higher resolution display, probably has about an hour less battery life, but I'm still getting over seven hours battery life with the 4K XPS 15 and the Mac I'll probably get around eight hours. That's just general web surfing, etc. And both of them were capable of having video rundown tests of over 10 hours. So class leading battery life for both of them. With the Mac, you can have up to four terabytes of storage with the XPS 15 you can have two terabytes of storage the max is super fast it does have that custom controller apple make themselves and it is controlled by the t2 chip but with the xps 15 of course you can upgrade the ssd so you can put a 970 pro or 970 evo whatever the latest ssd comes out you can always upgrade it with the Mac, you can't upgrade anything. So the XPS 15, you can upgrade the RAM, SSD, you can replace the battery. So it's much more user-friendly in terms of being able to service it and probably gives it a longer lifespan too because you can buy a lower spec model and then upgrade it later and replace the battery easily. Now, when it comes to performance, this is where always the XPS 15 was always much better, but now it's a lot closer. They both share the same processor now. The XPS 15 does have a GTX 1050 Ti, which is considerably more powerful than the AMD 560X in MacBook Pro. But in terms of video editing for me, where I always said the Mac had a weak spot in like Premiere Pro, obviously it doesn't support CUDA and stuff like that, but now it is very competitive with the XPS 15 in video editing, Lightroom, all that sort of stuff. Very competitive. It's not a night and day difference when I edit video. I actually cannot tell the difference editing with either in Premiere Pro anymore. Render times are still faster on the XPS 15 and for gaming or anything that uses 3D, you're going to get the better performance with the XPS 15. They both have i9. The XPS 15 is going to get more out of the i9. It scores more on Cinebench compared to the MacBook Pro, but they're supposed to be updating Cinebench so it performs better with the Macs, whatever. 
but just the cooling system is a bit better in the XPS 15 so you will get more out of the i9 now both of them will have thermal management when you use the GPU both of them can maintain base clock speed and even more with the i9 under full CPU load the XPS 15 is 100 to 200 megahertz higher when you pick the CPUs but as soon as you introduce GPU heat and wattage both of them will thermal manage so they both have that issue and to be 100% perfectly frank I have yet to see a laptop that's under 18 millimeters that does not have some sort of thermal management so that's just the nature of the beast of being you know 17 millimeters and under in both these cases here so I've got to give the performance to the XPS 15 but the Mac very competitive now and it's not a big difference anymore except if you're gaming then the XPS 15 and 3D applications is much much more powerful in that regard so conclusion which one would I choose which one do I think is better but I'm probably leaning towards the XPS 15 the value the upgrade ability extra performance and the extra sharpness of a 4k display with touch but it's not one of those things where I say just get the XPS 15 you really have to work out your work usage and as my Greek friend says uh, yeah he's happy to pay that extra bit of money for the Mac because of whatever blah blah he says <laughs> um, and yeah begrudgingly I have to admit that the gap in terms of value isn't as great as it seems I honestly think you can't go wrong with either of them. You're going to have a great machine. And I would actually like to know in the comments which one you think is better and why. And would you pay the extra money for the Apple? They're both great laptops and I would have no qualms using any of them. I think they're the best two premium 15 inch laptops out there. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.